All right, so we have that for number eight. A study was conducted to investigate whether the mean reaction time of drivers who are talking on mobile phones is the same as the mean reaction time of drivers who are take, talking sorry, to passengers in the vehicle. Okay, so we have two things. Mean reaction time of drivers who are talking on their phone and mean reaction time of drivers who are talking to passengers in the same vehicle. Two independent groups were randomly selected for the study. Blah, blah, blah. To gather data, each driver was put in a car simulator and asked to either talk on a mobile phone or talk to a passenger. Each driver was instructed to apply the brakes as soon as they saw a red light appear in front of the car. The reaction times of the drivers in seconds were recorded as shown in the following table. So, for example, um, guy number one, cierto, when talking on a mobile phone and I had to press brake, Braked in 0.69 seconds. See, like a little more than half a second. And while talking to a passenger, it was a little less than that. See, 0.67 seconds. All right. So that is how you read the data. That is the context. That is what's going on. Here is where it gets a little juicy. Okay. At 10% level of significance, I'll explain that in a second. A T test, I'll explain that in a second as well, was used to compare the mean reaction times of the two groups. Each data set is assumed to be normally distributed, and the population variances are assumed to be the same. Let U1 and U2 be the population means for the two groups. The null hypothesis for this test is this. Part A, state alternative hypotheses. All right, so these exercises, you guys will notice, mathematically, they're not that hard, but you do need a lot of context to know how to approach it, okay? So first things first. When we talk about a null hypothesis, okay, it's usually, it, it looks like this, okay? You have H0 is going to be your null hypothesis, got it? And your H1, which is what we're going to call the alternative hypothesis, is going to be the opposite, all right, of H0. Give me a second. Boom. See? So H1 is going to be your null hypothesis, and H1 is going to be the opposite of H0. That is the first intuition uh, I'm going to share with you. Okay? If you really want to get te technical with it, technically H0 is that there is no change, and the alternative hypothesis is that there is change. Right? That's going to make more sense in a second, but intuitively I want you to stick with this. Okay? That the alternative hypothesis is basically the opposite of HO. See? So, if for HO we have that U1 minus U2 equals 0, okay, that is the same as saying that, okay, so U, U0, sorry, the null hypothesis H0 is that the first mean minus the second mean is equal to 0, which is the same as saying that the first mean minus, sorry, equals the second mean. See? How did I get there? I added U2 to both sides, okay? So the null hypothesis is basically saying, yo, the means are the same. Okay. So the means of the guys talking on a mobile phone versus the mean talking to a passenger like in the vehicle are the same mean. See, they're the same like whatever. There isn't a difference in reaction time. See, the alternative hypothesis because it's the opposite of H O. So H one is opposite of H O. If this is my H O which I'm going to put now in green, so that u1 equals u2, the opposite of u1 equaling u2 is simply that u1 does not equal u2. And so your h1 is effectively going to be this. That is for part A, all right? The biggest intuition I can share is that it's always going to be the opposite of the other hypotheses. And if one has an equal sign, well, what's the opposite of an equal sign? That it doesn't equal, see? That is part A. For part B, we need to calculate the p-value for these tests, see? And so when we talk about p-value, p-value is always something that gets compared to a level of significance, see? And so we're going to get some p-value plugging in the test into the calculator, and we compare that p-value to the level of significance, see? There's a general rule on how to conclude that and whatever and blah, blah, blah. But for now, let's focus on the graphing calculator, see? So you open up your graphing calculator, and you know you're working with some sort of statistics thing see and so here there's a button that says stat so i go ahead and press stat i go to tests because they tell us that we perform a t-test and i see that here i have t-test here see now 
If I press T test here, the second one, see? What does it ask for? Well, it asks for a mean, list one, a frequency, and a sort of conclusion. Now notice the list. See, there's only one list. But how many lists do I have here? Well, L1 is the ones talking on phone, and L2 is going to be talking to a passenger physically. And so here I actually have two tests. Ah, interesting. Let's go back to over here. Number four is two sample t-test. All right. So now, and I explain it this way because the day of the test, you're probably not going to remember perfectly, so you will go through this as well. You know that in stat tests, you have a whole bunch of stati statistics tests. See, you can see that one of these, you have t-test here, which is for one variable, and then down here you have two sample t-test. See, for more than one list. Here I have two lists. See, so I press here. I can see that I have list for L1, list for L2. All right. For frequencies, just get used to leaving them on one. See? And for pooled, because we're drawing like, because they're similar enough where I'm getting my data from, and also because da, 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 the population variances are assumed to be the same, intuitively just leave it as pooled. Okay, pooled is pretty much always just going to be yes. All right, I don't want to explain it too much because it's a little confusing. Intuitively leave pooled as yes, okay? So anyways, I open this up, I notice that I need to fill in L1 and L2, see? So where do I fill that in? You fill that in by pressing stat and then edit. Stat edit, here are my two lists, see? So as you can see, I have numbers, old numbers, see? So I'm going to erase L1. How can you do that quickly? You go up, you press clear, you press enter, boom, L1 is cleared. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it L1 here, so 69, which is this one here. 0.87, which is this one here, so on and so forth. All right, so give me a second. Bada bim, bada boom. 0 0.79, 0 0.87, 0 0.71. Cool. You do the same for the second list. See, I actually already did it. All right, you can double check, but I already put both lists. See. So, anyways. Now that you've identified you need to do the two sample t-test, and now that you've filled in what the t-test is asking for, cierto, which is putting it both lists, here I have L1, L2. I go ahead and go down here, see? Now you can see here that you have U1 can either not equal U2, be less than U2, or be greater than U2. Why is it stated like this? Because this is basically what you want to put for your alternative hypothesis. See, it's sort of, it's literally what you're testing, okay? And so if H0 is that, is this here, see? Where you're gonna plug in for your calculator is this one here, all right? That's the most intuitive way I can explain it. Let's go ahead and do the test. Pool, do you leave it as yes because you're taking from a same sort of population, quite literally, and they have the same variance. So well, let's go ahead and calculate, see? Here I get a whole bunch of numbers. Let's focus on the ones that actually matter, see? Right now, the only one that we need to care about is the p-value. So you see the p-value right there, I'm gonna write it down, see? So for part p, you have that your p-value is 0 0.077.84. Let's just leave it at that. All right, cool. So that is the p-value for this test. Awesome, what the hell do I do with it? Well, let's see for part C. Part C, part I, state the conclusion of the test and justify the answer. So the p-value needs to get compared to the level of significance, see? And so you need to compare this number to level of significance 10%. Now, ladies and gentlemen, p-value is in a decimal, see? And the level of significance is in a percent. So let's go ahead and turn them both into decimal or both into percent. I'm going to choose to turn them both into decimal, okay? And so this 10% is actually the same as 0 0.1. For those of you that are confused with what I just did, bear with me for a sec. See? 1, and this is the sort of thing you just have to memorize, okay? 1 is 100%. 0 0.1 is 0.1. And 0 0.05, how much might it be? 
All right, you remember those three and you can figure out any number or any decimals of percent. If you're not sure or you want a more mathematical explanation, all you're really doing here, okay, is you're multiplying by 100. So you multiply one by 100, you end up with 100. See, if you multiply 0 0.5 by 100, you end up with 50. If you multiply 0 0.05 by 100, you end up with five. See, and you're just multiplying it and putting the percent. That's how you end up with where you end up, see? All right, cool. So that's the intuition of what's going on. So this 10% level of significance is really just 0 0.1. And so right now, what we've identified is that this 0 0.07784 is less than 0 0.1. And so what does this mean? What is the conclusion of this? Well, when your p-value is less than p-value less than your level of significance, you reject HO. So the conclusion for part C, part I, is that you reject HO. All right, I suggest, and I know this isn't exactly like the most teacher thing to do, okay? But there's a lot of things you need to know for this test, okay? And a lot of it takes a lot of effort to learn really well. This is one of the few things that I would actually suggest just memorize it, okay? I want you to get a good grade. Part of me wants you to learn as well, which I'm not going to explain right now why it's like this. But if you want to skip ahead, just understand, dude, like, if p-value is less than level of significance, you reject the HO, period. And that way, you also memorize the alternative, ¿cierto? If the p-value is greater than the level of significance, you fail to reject the HO. All right? Awesome. Let's leave it at that. See? So part C, part I, we reject HO because the p-value is less than level of significance. This right here that I'm going to put now in black is enough justification for the AB. Okay, you don't have to do more than that. Part C, part double I, state what your conclusion means in this context. Well, let's think about it. See, let's think about it. So HO is telling me that mean one is equal to mean two. So in this context, what is mean one, what is mean two? Well, mean one comes from L1, and L1 comes from people talking on a phone. Mean two comes from L2, which is people talking to a passenger in the same car. And so HO is saying that both means are the same, which is basically saying that the reaction times of people talking on the phone are the same reaction times as people talking to a passenger. See, So if you reject HO, if you reject that these guys have the same mean, then you are rejecting that someone comes along and says they have the same reaction time. You say, nah, -uh, they don't. They don't because my p-value is less than my level of significance. And so what the conclusion means in this context is, ex is exactly that, that the means aren't the same, that it actually matters whether they talk to the phone or talk to a passenger in the same car physically for your reaction times. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I would suggest to do number 